happened to integrity, man, huh? How many brothers gotta wear a mother dress? Everybody on TV got on a goddamn dress. Shanae, Shanana, Shanooki. What I'm gonna be, Shan? It ain't happening. I'm tired of the rhetoric of, oh, you sell out in Hollywood because you wore a dress. I wore a dress, it's called White Chicks. You know what we did? We did a classic. Dustin, when Dustin Hoffman wears a dress Tootsie. in Tootsie, yes. he wins an Oscar. Mm -hmm. Black people, as soon as we put on a dress, we start tearing each other down. This is art and this is comedy. So you know how Cat Williams never holds back, right? Well, it looks like he's on a roll again, and this time he's got Marlon Wayans in his crosshairs. Yep, not even the Wayans brothers are safe from Cat's callouts. It's like he's got this radar, and if you say something even slightly off, you're in for it. Now, what's the deal with Cat and Marlon, you ask? Well, the rumor mill is buzzing with talks that Cat is gearing up for a showdown with Marlon. And what's the supposed reason behind this brewing feud? Cat is accusing Marlon of protecting what he calls predators in the comedy scene. Scene. What does Cat mean by predators, you wonder? Well, it all ties back to the whole wearing dresses in the media controversy among black comedians. According to Cat, strutting around in a dress is like a secret passageway for black comedians to make it big in the industry. And here's the twist, Marlon is supposedly singing a different tune from Cat's perspective. He's allegedly denying the whole dress-wearing narrative that Cat is throwing out there. Of course, when someone accuses you of something, you're gonna want to set the record straight, right? Marlon, known for his epic transformations in White Chicks, is no exception. But Kat isn't buying it. The rumor mill is going wild with speculations that Kat is pulling no punches, dragging Marlon by his hair, metaphorically speaking, and claiming that Marlon is shielding those who force black men into wearing dresses. It's a wild ride and Kat Williams is at the forefront, not holding anything back. We're all here for the tea and this comedy is getting juicier by the minute. Now let's dig deep and find out exactly what Marlon Wayans said to get under Kat's skin to the point where he's supposedly ready to confront him. So Marlon recently sat down with Big boy on his show, spilling all the tea about the whole dress-wearing drama in the industry. He didn't hold back, saying, I'm sick of this whole idea that wearing a dress in Hollywood means you've sold out. Come on now, look at white chicks. That's a classic, and we it. Marlon's point is, why do black folks get all worked up when one of their own throws on a dress? But when white actors like Robin Williams, Tom Hanks, or Dustin Hoffman do it, they're hailed as brilliant? He straight up called out the double standards and said, black people need to stop tearing each other down over this dress thing. It's comedy. It's art. When Dustin Hoffman wins an Oscar for rocking a dress, it's genius. But somehow, when it's a brother, we start hating. Marlon's not here for that toxic mindset. He's all about embracing every shade of black humor, celebrating the diversity within the black community. Marlon's throwing shade at the idea that wearing a dress somehow diminishes a black actor's talent. He's got a point, why tear down legends like Flip Wilson or Tyler Perry just because they rocked a dress for a role? Marlon's on a mission to break free from the toxicity, urging minorities to unite and celebrate the richness of our humor. He's not about dragging each other down, he's all about lifting each other up. So, in his words, let's ditch that toxic vibe and start embracing the full spectrum of black comedy. Marlon continued spilling the beans about his own experience when Cat Williams threw shade at him for not being a full-time stand-up comedian. Back in the day, they were working on Behind the Smile, and Marlon wasn't hitting the stand-up scene hard at that time. Cat was like, man, you should try it, you're funny, offering up his own material like he's got hours of it in the vault. Marlon was having none of it, though. He was like, nah, if I'm gonna do stand-up, I'm writing my own stuff. I appreciate appreciate the offer, but I got this. Cat was trying to push him into the comedy world, but Marlon stuck to his guns as an actor. And that's where things got a bit spicy because Cat went on about Marlon not doing stand-up, calling him a comedic actor, not a comedian. He says crazy stuff about me, but I don't take it negative. One time he said, Marlon Wayans ain't a real comedian. I said, okay. And this is about 10 years ago. Now here's the kicker, Marlon took that as a challenge, not a diss. He embraced it as an opportunity to step up his comedy game. Instead of getting all defensive, he was like, okay, you're right, got work to do. Fast forward, and Marlon's been hustling, doing specials, hitting the road, basically on the grind to become a legit comedian. He admitted he's way better now than when Kat dropped that comment, but he didn't let it get him down. He flipped it into something positive, using it as fuel to become his greatest self in the comedy game. No negativity here. It's all love. Marlon emphasized that his family's all about spreading love in the industry, and they wish everyone nothing but good vibes. So after Marlon spilled the beans in that interview, some 
some fans weren't exactly on board with what he was saying, and they were quick to back up Cat Williams. One fan said, Everybody in their feelings but missing what Cat Williams is saying, if a man in Hollywood doesn't want to wear a dress, it shouldn't stop his career from moving forward. And another said, Cat Williams said the people who sold their souls have to spend most of their careers trying to convince us they didn't. But if you really think about it, the truth was staring us in the face, and maybe we just chose to look the other way. Hate on Cat all you want, but he didn't spin any lies about the whole men wearing dresses trend in movies. Let's talk Kevin Hart for a sec. Before he skyrocketed to the Kevin Hart we all know and love, he was dropping some wisdom in an interview. Kevin was all about artists protecting their brand, setting boundaries, and not crossing certain lines. At that point, he was vibing with his personal beliefs, no dress drama in sight. When the topic of wearing a dress for a role came up, Kevin was straight up up like, nah, haven't faced that dress dilemma. Gotta know your boundaries and protect your brand. He was all about steering clear of anything that could compromise his image. Kevin even mentioned turning down a request to dribble a basketball on a talk show because it would make him look fool. It's all about protecting the brand. Definitely haven't ran in a, to put on the dress. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you have to have, you have to have boundaries. You have to have limits that you refuse to crawl. But here's where it gets interesting. Just a year later, boom, Kevin's on an SNL skit rocking a dress. Nine-year-old Oscar nominee, <laughs> Kevin Wallace. Fans were not having it. Accusations of selling out and being fake started flying around. It was like, hold up, wasn't you just preaching about boundaries and protecting your brand, Kev? The plot twist got fans feeling some type of way, and they called him out for doing the exact thing he said artists shouldn't do. But then, Kevin Hart pulled a complete 180 on us, flipping the script from his earlier stance on wearing dresses. He initially said, no way, I'm not putting on a dress. Fast forward to when the opportunity knocked and he found the whole idea funny. Suddenly he was like, why not? I'm doing it. You know what? I was actually I was actually one of those comedians that said, no, I wouldn't wear a dress. There's no way I will wear a dress. And, and then when proposed with the opportunity of what I felt was funny, I thought, oh, it's funny, I'm gonna do it. But here's where it gets tricky. Kevin, in defense mode, starts saying nobody forced Martin Lawrence into Big Mama's house, or Tyler Perry into Medea, or Jamie Foxx into Wanda's dress. It was a choice, according to Kevin. He's hitting us with the it's all about choice narrative. But then there's this counter argument floating around. It's all about choice. You know, right. nobody makes you do anything. Right. Nobody says this is what you gotta do. This is the only way that you're gonna do it. People are saying it's not just a matter of choice. Kevin himself wasn't okay with the idea before the money talks began. When the cash starts rolling in, suddenly integrity takes a back seat. It's like money becomes this magical thing that makes people do stuff they swore they'd never do. And truth be told, when that paycheck comes into the picture, folks tend to reveal their true colors. Remember when Steve Harvey dropped that bomb about integrity? He straight up said, give me 10 million and I'll embarrass myself all the way to the bank. He was willing to throw his integrity out the window for a hefty paycheck. It's a harsh reality, but hey, he put it out there. 10 million for 4 million I'll be all the can stand. I, black people will be so embarrassed by my performance, you'll be sitting up there just going, look at this big lip, son of a Now, back to Kevin Hart. After he did the dress thing, his career went through the roof. He became the highest paid comedian ever, raking in cash like no one else. It's like the dress move was the golden ticket to success in the comedy game. People might argue about the sacrifice of integrity, but at the end of the day, Kevin's laughing all the way to the bank. So, some folks used to give Cat Williams a hard time for what he said, but here's the scoop. Even his buddies, like Brandon Jackson, didn't see eye to eye with him initially. But now, they've caught on to what Cat was talking about. In a candid interview with Comedy Hype, Brandon C. Jackson openly shared his regret about wearing a dress alongside Martin Lawrence in Big Mama's house. Reflecting on that time, he admitted, everything went wrong when I put on that dress. According to Jackson, the pre-Big Mama's era marked a turning point in his career. And while it brought positive aspects like increased visibility, it also had negative consequences for his personal life. Everything went wrong, just like everything went right. Everything went wrong when I put on that dress. When asked about the changing point, Jackson clarified that it was a negative shift. Sure, his face was plastered on buses, but behind the scenes, his personal life was a mess. According to him, it was a pretty horrible time. The interviewer pressed him to spill more details, and Jackson got real about not being able to share his story eloquently back then. It's like being a baby who can't communicate yet. He wasn't the seasoned stand-up he is now. Looking back, he revealed that during the Big Mama's house period, he met his daughter's mother. And from that point, his personal 
personal life became challenging. Although his career was at its peak, it was a tumultuous time for him personally. Jackson likened it to a passing of the torch, playing Martin Lawrence's son, and noted that playing such roles seemed to bring unexpected challenges. When asked what went wrong with Big Mama's house, Jackson didn't sugarcoat it. He expressed that, in his opinion, the movie wasn't that good and wasn't a prolific film. While acknowledging the entertainment factor, he pointed out that the concept of a man in a dress had been overdone, citing Miss Doubtfire as a precedent. Jackson admitted he took on the role primarily for the money and the opportunity to work with Martin Lawrence. It was entertaining, but not exactly an Oscar-worthy masterpiece. What didn't go right with Big Mamas? It was, first of all, no offense, that movie was to me. It wasn't a prolific film. Continuing the conversation, Brandon C. Jackson emphasized that his decision to wear the dress in Big Mama's house was motivated by more than just money. He was eager to make a big move in his career. The interviewer then shifted the focus to Brandon's current perspective, noting that he seems more awakened compared to when he first entered the industry. Bringing up the dress again, the interviewer asked if Brandon faced criticism at that moment. Cat Williams was trying to always say, Brandon, Brandon, don't wear a dress. <laughs> you know, he, he called you or is this? No, he was saying in the media, so I thought he was heckling me. He was really trying to help me at the time. I didn't know that. I was immature. Brandon clarified that he didn't receive backlash from people except for Cat Williams, who consistently advised him against wearing a dress. Initially, Brandon thought Williams was just heckling him, but later realized that Williams was genuinely trying to help him. Brandon admitted his own immaturity at the time, feeling defensive about pursuing his career while facing criticism. Williams, it turned out, was attempting to warn him about the potential pitfalls of getting into a dress. The interviewer then asked if, given his current awakened mindset, there's any amount of money that could convince him to wear a dress. Brandon firmly stated that no amount of money could sway him. Further questioning revolved around how the introduction of the dress played out in his career. Brandon explained that after a scene in Lottery Ticket where he didn't wear a dress, the industry started pushing the idea onto him. He drew parallels to Tupac's experience, suggesting that when someone is perceived as too real, the industry attempts to control that authenticity by putting them in a dress. When asked about the purpose of putting actors in dresses, whether it's to tone down their realness, Brandon expressed a personal perspective. He believed that wearing a dress is not part of his cultural background and people from different cultures may impose their norms. He considered it a curse for him personally, as things went downhill in his life and career since then. Despite the challenges, Brandon stood firm in his belief, emphasizing that everyone has the right to choose based on their culture and beliefs. Continuing the chat, Brandon Jackson brought up how even Dave Chappelle has shared thoughts on this topic. He mentioned noticing changes in Martin Lawrence, emphasizing it's not a dig, just an observation. Brandon acknowledged the fire and energy Martin once had, comparing it to his own experience of getting older but still feeling lively. He threw in Eddie Murphy, noting that despite being older, Murphy still carries that fire, suggesting it might be more about age. When asked if Martin's change could be due to the business wearing him out, Brandon shared his belief that it's more of a spiritual thing. He emphasized that everyone's journey is different, and he can only speak for himself. Brandon candidly explained that for him, putting on the dress seemed to extinguish the fire he once had. He reflected on doing it only once, while other like Martin wore dresses multiple times, and Tyler Perry in particular seemed to grow stronger from it. Brandon humorously admitted he doesn't know the rules governing these experiences. The interviewer questioned if Brandon would warn fellow stand-up comedians about wearing a dress, to which he affirmed in a laid-back way. He expressed that while some people can handle it, it didn't work for him, so he wouldn't advise others to take that gamble. Brandon even threw in a light-hearted remark about wanting a time machine to go back and give his past self a good punch in the chest. You see, Kat's got that spiritual vibe, which is why he wasn't up for rocking a dress when Martin Lawrence suggested it. It's not that Martin's a bad dude, he just wasn't clued in like Kat. According to Kat, Martin hit him up during a hiatus saying, Kat, when I'm back, I need you in my next movie. We're doing some buddy cop stuff. Kat, being the loyal homie, was like, sure, Martin, I got your back. But then reality hit when they got in the office, and Martin pulled out the script for Big Mama's House 2. Kat almost keeled over when he saw that dress again. He spilled the tea, saying, I'm looking at this script, wondering why Martin's back in a dress. You already played the old lady. We can be anything. FBI agents, dog catchers, you name it. Why the dress, man? Cat got so heated that he straight up told Martin, you don't want me. You want Brandon T. Jackson. And guess who they ended up getting? Yep, you guessed it.
it. Brandon T. Jackson, not once but twice. Cat claims he had all the material, but he just wanted to punch it up to keep it real. He didn't want it to be offensive to the real ones out there. That's how he landed in this whole predicament. So, it's not just about the dress, it's about Cat wanting to keep it authentic and not compromise his principles. Now, interestingly enough, this story would remind us of the time Dave Chappelle would share that he too was approached to wear a dress, and guess what? It's got a Martin Lawrence connection. Chappelle would break his silence back in 2006 while speaking with OPR. He walks into the trailer and sees a dress, thinking it's the wrong one. Turns out, it's for a scene where Martin's character sneaks out of jail by dressing Chappelle as a prostitute. Chappelle's like, nah, I'm not doing that, it wasn't in the discussion. They try to pressure him, saying it's a hilarious bit, but he stands his ground, saying he doesn't need a dress to be funny. The whole thing gets intense with writers, directors, and producers pushing, but Chappelle sticks to his guns. In the end, they come up with a new scene without the dress, and he's left wondering, how did you write that so fast? Dave just didn't vibe with it, not because wearing a dress is an issue on its own, but because he felt the industry was trying to corner black artists into doing whatever it took for success. They kept hounding him until they figured out he wouldn't budge. Dave revealed this whole experience was an eye-opener. It took being told to wear a dress for him to connect the dots and realize this wasn't just his struggle. Lots of other black men had been asked to do the same. Martin Lawrence rocked it in Big Mama's house. Eddie Murphy pulled it off in the Nutty Professor series, and Jamie Foxx left a mark with his unforgettable ugly Wanda on In Living Color. Then you've got the Wyans brothers trying their hand at it with white chicks. Oh, and we can't forget the less successful Juana man. In the mix of all this, Tyler Perry takes the cake with his Medea franchise. So, Tyler Perry fired back at Dave Chappelle in an interview saying, Look, Chappelle is one of the smartest guys I've ever seen, not just in comedy but in deep thinking. If that's how it rolls in Hollywood, cool, but that ain't my story. Nobody told me to wear that dress but me. It's my $2 billion franchise and it's always been my choice. I've done 19 movies since then, all by my own call. Maybe it's different for others, but for me, it's like putting on a work uniform. I'm not a guy who enjoys wearing a dress, but as an actor, it's a costume. It's like someone going to Walmart. You put on your uniform. For me, it's about putting on that uniform, going out, making people laugh, lifting them up, and giving them some encouragement. That's how I see it. 19 movies since then has been my choice. So, <laughs> so I don't, I don't, maybe that's the, maybe that's the way it's been for some other men who have had done that. But for me, let me tell you how I look at this, man. Now, if you're not in the loop, there's been talk circulating for a while that black comedians at some point feel pressured to wear a dress in films. Some see it as a sort of buck breaking or a way to prove to Hollywood that you're willing to do whatever it takes to make it. It's definitely making waves and sparking discussions online. Let me break down the origin of buck breaking real quick. Back in the day, mainly in the Caribbean, slave owners used this messed up tactic against male slaves who were seen as rebellious. Picture this. They'd make the enslaved guy drop his pants, bend over a tree stump, and then whip him real bad. The goal? Weaken him so he couldn't resist the R that followed. Yeah, it's heavy stuff. The white slave owner would go ahead and do the unspeakable, right in front of the enslaved man's wife. Imagine the trauma of that. Now fast forward to today, and you see a similar vibe. Strong black men, even in Hollywood, ending up in dresses just like they did back then. It messes with your head, especially for kids seeing these role models switching up like that. It's like they're playing mind games, doing it in front of fans, family, the whole deal. That's the connection folks are making, history repeating itself, but in a different form. Crazy, right? It's kind of funny, in a messed up way. You notice the pattern? They always bring in these strong black manly dudes first. Like, they weren't dressing up in high school or middle school, always rocking that masculine vibe. And it's not about being gay or whatever. If that's your style, do you know judgment? But we're talking about strong straight black men here. Check out how they enter Hollywood all strong and confident. Then peep how they leave, it's a whole different scene. And you can't just blame the industry alone. These guys make the choice to go along with it. They willingly bow down to the agenda just to level up. We gotta hold them accountable too, you feel me? They're ready to do anything for that next level, even if it means going through this weird ritual. The industry's like, how bad do you want this money? Are you down to sell out your people, push a certain agenda, and emasculate yourself in front of everyone? Just just like the buck breaking back in the day, but now it's crazy. These dudes are willingly allowing it. Times have changed, and now it's a choice. Now, despite everything, it looks like Marlon Wyans is taking the high road when it comes to Cat Williams. In the interview, Marlon laid it out saying, look, in the stand-up world, we're all in this together. It's like a fraternity, a brotherhood. I don't care about other people's opinions on this. Art is art. We're a family, and I'm not about fostering or promoting negativity. If I got an issue with someone, I'm gonna talk to them directly. No airing dirty laundry in public. I see this as a gentleman's game, and I want
want to keep it that way. Marlon's got this whole brotherhood vibe going on, emphasizing that he won't dictate how his fellow comedians conduct themselves. Despite any differences, he's still showing love for Cat Williams. It's like Marlon saying, hey, Cat's gonna be Cat. You know him, that crazy cousin at the barbecue. That's just Willie being Willie. Marlon seems to acknowledge Cat's brilliance, giving props for the specials and the business moves. It's all about recognizing the talent and respecting the game. But here's the twist. It doesn't seem like Cat reciprocates the same warmth. While Marlon is keeping it cool, Cat might not be feeling the love in the same way. Anyways, what do you guys think of all this? Share your thoughts in the comments and we'll catch you in the next video.